morning. This is the Morning News on WSBA, hour number three. I'm Gary Sutton. And I'm Chris Tyler. WSBA News Time is 810. And don't forget, you can follow us at, at Gary G. Sutton on Twitter and also at Facebook.com slash 910WSBA. And if you missed it this morning, Joe the Plumber Wurzelbacher was on at 710 with us five years later after the Spread the Wealth comment. And you can go back and go into Facebook and listen to that interview again, as you will be able to this next one with Rick Santorum. And also, you can go to NewsRadio910.com. WSBA News Time is 810, and we said uh, we have a very special guest this morning at 810. We do. He's a former senator of Pennsylvania, former presidential candidate, full-time father, and now the CEO of Echo Light Studios. We're talking about Rick Santorum. Welcome back, Rick. Great to have you on the show. Well, it is great to be back on SBN with you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure. And I said full-time dad. I mean, you you probably uh, making sure you have enough uh, to feed all the mouths there at Thanksgiving, right? Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, you know, we have three in college and uh, uh, three in uh, three in high school, and then we have our little girl Bella. And so it's it's a busy house, and uh, it, there's a lot of mouths to feed, and a lot of tuitions to pay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're now, and I I did not know this until just. Recently, you are now the CEO of Equilite Studios, and you have a new movie out called The Christmas Candle Movie, and for a lot of people out there who read Max Licato, uh, my wife did, and my wife was updating me last night as we went to the movie last evening. We went out to see it because when you were doing this interview today, and I wanted to go out and see the movie, and uh, it was it was heartwarming. It really was an excellent movie, and, and hats off to you. Well, thank you very much. We're I'm, I tell you, I'm I'm really excited about uh, the opportunity to get out there and and make a difference. Uh, you know, the, uh, the President Obama was at DreamWorks yesterday and and uh, commented that uh, that Hollywood has changed the culture in America, and and mentioned a couple of shows like Modern Family and Will and Grace. Uh, and and he's right that they have changed America. They've uh, they he's he's been. Uh, he's been trying to transform America, and Hollywood has been helping him. And you know, we can curse the darkness, or we can we can light a candle. We can go out there and try to produce content that reflects, you know, good morality and that reflects uh, the kind of uh, the kind of virtues that made our country a great country. Uh, or we can just complain in Hollywood and try to block the stuff that Hollywood tries to shove down our throat. Yeah, you know what the scary part is, Senator, is that you'll some of these shows that originally aired maybe after nine o'clock at night are now in reruns, and you see these things at like four o'clock in the afternoon, and there is you know inappropriate material on many networks at four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know what we do about that. Yeah, I mean you have that plus you know take a look at what's on at eight or nine o'clock anymore. Right. I mean it's it, it's edgy, it's it's pushing the envelope, it's it's over it's violent, it's over sexualized, it's uh it's diminishing the roles of uh traditional roles in families, particularly fathers are are seen as you know, name a show where a father isn't looked like as an idiot or, or somebody who's uh, or either not there or whatever the case may be. I mean it's it's it is a very much trying to transform America into something very different than uh than what built the greatest country in the history of the world and and I think for a long, long time conservatives have sat on the sideline and tried to play defense, try to protect their families, protect themselves from this assault. Uh and I decided, you know, I'm gonna stop cursing the darkness and go out there and, and do something about it. And and this film, uh called the the Christmas Candle, as you mentioned, uh Gary, you know, produced uh, we produced uh, well we didn't produce it, we were distributing it. It was made from a Max Lucado book. It's a beautiful film. It's a heartwarming film. It's a so it's a film that is just the perfect film to take to your to your family or or actually to take your parents to uh about you know set in Victorian England it's a I always say it's a mix between a Christmas carol and a wonderful life because yeah. you've got you know folks struggling with faith struggling with you know the meaning of Christmas and what uh what what uh you know God commands of us and uh, at the same time it's just a beautiful heartwarming story of uh you know the the, the Christmas season. Well, you know what else I think, too, Rick? And it struck me last night. I was sitting there watching the movie, and it it takes place in this English village of Gladbury. Uh, and first of all, the architecture there is incredible, but but that's that's the cheap superficial side of me looking at that. But on the other side, uh, you have real people struggling with real problems that aren't unlike today, and and I think that's what really hits me. And and of course, this pastor uh, is going through this tough time of really understanding is there a miracle or not, and we find out later on in the movie some things about him we didn't know in the beginning, and I'm not going to break the story for everybody here, but but the point being, real people going through real problems and a belief in miracles and, and the idea that you can still believe in miracles and they will happen sometime. 
Yeah, that God will answer your prayers. That's really the issue here. Does God is exactly. God around? Is 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 he is he? You know, we all in and the characters in this movie go through it. We all pray and <clears throat> and we think God doesn't hear us. Uh, that God doesn't do anything. That you know, we pray and we ask for things and and things don't happen. And 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 a lot of folks get discouraged and and drift away as a result of that. And uh, we have characters in this movie who do that. And uh, you you realize that that that's. You know, you see yourself. I see myself in some of the characters in this film. We have a we have a, a another a character who's not a believer at all. We have folks that that believe, you know, that believe in miracles and and angels and all these amazing things, but they don't do anything to help their neighbors. So I mean, you see people sort of in all all steps of not living out, you know, what 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 their faith really commands them to do. And it's um, it's really it's I think it's beautifully done. And and uh, you mentioned the scenery it was shot in the Cotswolds in England. Oh, and, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful little town. And and all of the uh, if you love Downton Abbey, you're going to love this because you know all the all the costumes are original 1890s costumes, and they really went to a lot of trouble for details and and to make this film just a beautiful film. The folks who shot it uh, did all the Harry Potter films. So it's it's just a first rate production, and uh, I just encourage people if you want to see more films like this. I hate to sa- sound this way, but if you want to see more films like this, you got to go out and support these films in theaters. <clears throat> I know folks will say, "Oh, we'll wait till the DVD comes out." You know what? <laughs> then, then 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 you're going to see then you're going to get a lot of DVD quality movies. You're not going to get theatrical quality movies, and that's really the difference. Unless you go to the theaters, you're not going to have folks go out and make the quality movies like this one is to be in theaters because they're not supported well enough to make the money necessary to put the production value behind them. So I know that's that, I mean, it's getting into the business of, of, of it, but it matters. It matters if you really want to see better quality, entertaining films that not only reach those who are going to the, going into the pews, but everybody else who needs to be exposed to authentic faith and the struggles of authentic faith that they're dealing with in their own lives. So I encourage you to see it. We're in, we're in three theaters in central Pennsylvania, one in Harrisburg, the Harrisburg East Mall, one at the Manor Stadium in Lancaster, and then at West Manchester Mall Stadium in York. And I will say, last we opened last week, and I don't want to put a challenge down to the people of York, but of the three <laughs> theaters... But of the three theaters, York is running third among the three of uh, those three theaters. Yeah. I believe that was a challenge, well, Senator. That's out of Regal that was Cinema, a by the way. Bit of a, chal- yeah. a little bit, a little bit of a challenge to, to the people <laughs> of York to to see if you know the uh, yeah the, the the War of the Roses. You know, I just <laughs> lay that out here. It's a British film, so uh, let's see if we can rekindle a little bit of the positive spirit of that. Well, I did my part. My wife did too last night. We both enjoyed the movie, and it is out of Regal Theater, right there at. Uh, West Manchester Mall, and we'd encourage people to get out and see it. I think that, if I remember, the times were 4.15, 7.15, and 9.15, so you can get on out there and see it. But, uh, you know, Rick, something hit me last night. There are so many religions out there who tell their story regularly and are proud of it, and yet it seems like there's something, a tinge almost, if you go out and honestly tell a story about Christmas that involves just Christmas and religious aspects of it. And I found last night's story to be a very beautiful one. Is that, and what really struck me, they're talking about the four candles of Advent. And, and each of the messages that he sent out uh, you know, became something that went into action in the community. But uh, yeah. it, there are people out there who would say, oh, this is just a sappy old story. This is one that you, you, you know, it's just, eh. but, you know, what do you say to people like that? That, you know, shouldn't you well, be proud to tell your story? Well, it's interesting. Uh, if you look at the theater critics uh, in the secular world, the New York Times and and the like, I've read them. Uh, they said that's exactly what they said. Sappy story. Right. Uh, it's not relevant in the world today because they don't see faith as relevant in the world today. They, they see this as as sort of a bygone era, and it's you know it's it's remote. It doesn't matter. I was in a debate the other day with Howard Dean, and I and I laid out uh, our founding principles and how important virtue was in order for uh, us to be free, because one way or another, you know, we're either going to be constrained by the government to, to, uh, to, so freedom can work, uh, because uh, if, if people don't act morally good, then they're going to do things that are going to cause problems in our society. And so we either have to restrain ourselves or government's going to restrain us. And, and Howard Dean looked at me, and we talked about, and I talked about the role of God in doing so, and he said, Rick Santorum is talking about a bygone era in America. That America's wow. gone. 
I mean, I, it just stunned me. But I, you know what? I give him credit for honesty because that's what they believe. They believe when you tell stories about you know folks and and struggling with their faith and the importance of 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 accepting you know uh, you know God and His call on your life and then turning that and doing things for your neighbors. That's that's history. You know, God isn't important, and in fact, what you see is the number of people who identify themselves as believing in God continually, slowly and slowly and slowly drop, and and among our young people, dropping even faster. And it's and I hate to say it is the popular culture that's 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 sending those messages. It is the movies that they go in and see. It is the television programs. It is what's going on in our schools, which have taken Bible out of the classrooms. I mean, it it is you can't unless you are raised in a family with faith, you don't see faith. Uh, and and so it, it it's not surprising to me that this happens. All the more reason that when you have you know someone who's stepping out and spending millions and millions of dollars to put together a film that does for the first time in fifty years we have a movie at Christmas time that actually mentions faith right about uh, and faith and 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 what Christmas is actually all about. And if we can't get the community behind that kind of movie with the quality acting and a beautiful new Susan Boyle is in this film. She sings right. a beautiful song. We have great actors and actresses, great quiet, high quality production. If the, if, if folks in America who are out there saying, what's wrong with America? What can I do? If they can't spend 10 bucks on a movie, uh, on a movie to promote that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, impact or the potential impact of that, then we're all sort of going to be hurt. So, so you you think America is moving toward a godless society at this point? Do you think the current administration is kind of you know pushing us further in that direction? Just read the remarks of the president yesterday. I mean, he's uh, and and look at look at what what they're doing with religious liberty. I mean, it's under full scale assault. I mean, you have uh, not just here at home with Obamacare, and you know Obamacare is a good example, though. I mean, if you look at what the president did on this contraception, abortion pills. He could have made those free to every everybody. He could have had to said, okay, every pharmacy in the country has to carry these, and they have to distribute them free. But that's not what they did. What they did was say, okay, Gary, you have to pay for it. Whether you agree with this or not, you hobby lobby. You have to pay for this right. for your folks, whether you agree with it or not. So it's not just a matter of, we want. We think this is a good thing. We think it's such a good thing that we want to force you to do something so you will accept the authority of the government over your religious beliefs. That is a scary thing. I don't care whether you believe in that everybody should have all the condoms they want or all the all the pills they want or whatever the case may be. I don't care what the issue is. But the fact that the government said that we are going to force you to do something that you don't believe in your in your religious tenets and teaching is right should scare every single one of us but it is not an an- anomaly it is it is something that's going to be a regu- it no. is a regular course in this administration and you see the the hostility toward god uh now coming even more more uh, apparent in government you see it more apparent in film you yeah. see it more apparent on tv and it, it's going to continue. Rick, I wish we had about three hours right with you this morning, but great stuff. And uh, a blessed Thanksgiving to you and your family. We hope people will get out to the Regal Cinema, out at the West Manchester Mall. And if you're somewhere closer, you go to the other places. But uh, get on out there and see a Chris, The Christmas Candle. Uh, outstanding movie. Uh, as I said, I enjoyed it. And uh, hope you have a great Christmas season here, Rick. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Always a pleasure. Take care.